Let's go ahead and start this uh, meeting on Monday. And so all we do is start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And so uh, the following me, please, to place the flag and the heart. Jerry, you ready? Right here. I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Thank you. And as we start off every meeting, uh, let me introduce the board. We have Nancy Brodsky. We got Jacob. There you go. George Collins. Gary Paul. And I'm Carl Benninger. I'm Mrs. Irma. Uh, you're not here yet. Should be your trouble. Oh, I'm sorry, Martin. And Martin, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, and when you told me I was in trouble, I said, I know. It's been the whole day. <laughs> okay. Um, we're going to start off with Tram Lee talking about the uh, arts and cultures update in the city. Tram? He hasn't logged on to yet, yet so okay. we can go on to the next. Then let's. Uh, Let's go down to uh, Chicago. I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Can we have uh, Delilah Schnell come up here, please? Delilah? <coughs> she is the owner of the Alta Baja Market, Santa Ana. And she's the one we have to thank for the food tonight. Thank you very much. I'm not Delilah Schnell. But I am happy to give it to her. She might log on on Zoom or she might come in person to speak to you guys. Um, she's the owner of Alta Baja Market and Fourth Street Market in downtown Santana. Please, please, her cornbread is delicious. It's homework ready. Please have some uh, boxes or fresh veggies. Um, downtown Inc. is sponsoring today's um, nice meal. Mm -hmm. Amazing food. Um, they have pozole Sundays. It's a great event, but also like her salads, everything is great. And she has real items from like Mexico in there. So it's also a market. It feels like home, but it's a big old restaurant. So they have amazing enchiladas. It's 401 uh, East 4th Street. And my name is Maria Gonzalez. I'm from uh, Santa Ana Business Council in downtown East. I do community engagement and their marketing and social media. So please follow us on the website. Thank you. Sure. Talk about the uh, library. I'm here. Did you? Come on. Come on down. Very exciting, exciting to get the uh, knowledgeable bills running again. Person uh, where I grew up, that was my, my way to books. Oh, yes. I'm Cheryl Everly. I'm the principal librarian for Young Adult and Health Services at the library, and I will be responsible for the upcoming Knowledge Mobile, which is what we call it our book mobile. Um, in Santa Ana, the book mobile has a lot of nostalgia, a lot of people, very fond memories of their book mobile. Our upgraded 21st century book mobile will be a knowledge mobile. So it can drive in our city streets and the congestion and all that and um, be very maneuverable. We are anticipating delivery of it soon. We don't have a date yet. It's going to be set by a lot of chip shortages. They have probably because they're building it in uh, North Carolina. Um, so we're really looking forward to it coming. That's the design of it. That's where it's been built so far. The locations for it, we are finalizing the locations for where the book will be stopping. 
Uh, but our priority is to have it be stops that are far away from present current library locations. So stops that are not close by the main library or the new book library. The programming is going to be in the theme of connect, create, chill. There will be robots in residence, and I'll have Eric talk a little bit about the robotics program that are going to be in there. And the, we have the create component, which will be music classes. We have Bailey circles and bongo drums and art in the park. And um, and the chill sessions will be being able to read. There'll be a lot of iPads and early literacy computers also for people to use. So, and most of the activities will be occurring outside the knowledge mobile. So the knowledge mobile has sort of like a time that comes out and then we can use text and people will be able to really enjoy kind of the full experience. I'd like to introduce the official bookmobile librarian, Eric Jones here. <laughs> Hi, my name is Eric Jones. I'm the local librarian for the Book Library. Uh, I'm here to talk about. Oh, I need my kind of sorry, I'm really loud. Um, can you guys all hear me? Okay, perfect. So again, my name is Eric Jones. I am the San Diego Public Library for the Librarian, and I'm here to talk about our our STEM program, which is part of our robotic our robotics program here at the library. Um, the STEM program is designed to work with people on the autism spectrum. Um, we have several different um, robots. So I'll talk about those that we did. Group sessions, so we can kind of work more with the robots to develop social skills and behavior skills, and to kind of get more comfortable interacting and developing those skills to make it that will help us later on in life. In addition to those, we also have a lot of robots for coding and like seven related activities, like uh, giving paper to high schools that will help them as they get into high school and all those things. Kind of um, other than that, it's uh, Google Meal. It's we're really excited to have it, and I'm kind of and kind of get it going in a couple of ways. In addition to that, we also have two um, library kiosks, um, one at the Santa Ana train station and one at the Health Center. Um, and that we've been testing those out and the kids are going to be able to come in and check their books. Um, and we're looking to expand on that in the future. Any, any, any questions? Yes, <laughs> So when they rent the books or borrow the books, um, when they have to return them, you guys come back to neighborhoods? Yes. yes. Cool. So yes. The, the goal is um, every site will be getting at least one every two weeks. Um, we have several sites online already in the And you can return it to other book locations to return the books to the library. And as you know, our library is not quite free. So you won't get by if you return to the library. So I need to download and uh yeah so it'll be we are on a two-week location right now in our new request so do you have a date anticipated date don't have it's soon it's soon it's happening soon we're working on the programming for it the sound program we're doing a lot of test work in the library right now every other saturday and we've had a lot uh quite a few kids in their families come and they believe so far um, a couple of our kids, and uh, they get really ecstatic and they get really excited to work with robots. And they have a great time doing that. We also have um, sensory like, programs and toys to give them some kind of play with. That's our QT robot. And it's designed specifically to work with the robot sensor. The program is a tech called Robot TV. And so it's really cutting edge. and. We are currently the only library in the United States that's operating this All right. Here's so, first. Here's first. Here's first. Here's first. Yeah, I, I, George Collins, I have two questions for you. And I, I didn't I don't hear too well over here because of age and location. Um it does it have it does the, the bookmobile or library mobile, knowledge, knowledge mobile, knowledge. thank you. Does it have wireless if you okay, yes. very good. And the robots, I'm assuming they're going to be spoken well, uh, voice recognition. What languages are they recognizing? They're recognizing currently all the programming is in English, okay. but because the robots are programmed phonetically, it has capacity for us to also have the robots speak in Spanish, but at a much slower rate. Okay, do you know of the future of that? If it will expand to other yes. languages or what? It, what One of our robots is that the company is working on a Spanish language package for it. It's currently in works. Um, you're very good, thank you. But they are very excited about what we're doing with the robots with this program, and they'll probably let us 
that has kind of been interesting. Yeah, like the mic. Uh, many years ago, before and after I was married, I lived in a library in Orange County. My sister and my girlfriend did too. And she worked on a book mobile for a bunch of characters. Most of them she had some stationed out of New Tour Air Base and everything. <laughs> Why she bought it? Anyway, but uh, no absolute priorities. <laughs> I need to remind my people of the cities. Anyway, uh, well, what I think would be nice, let us know when that does open. Is it us? I, for one, and I'm sitting in the board members, and both of you two way out there watching just a visit and see, and then we, we can spread that on ourselves, spread that around. We would love, yeah, yeah, we would love to let you know, and I'm going to be sending Eric on the Neighborhood Association meeting to work. <laughs> so you know, you know, so he'll be out there. So this is his first introduction in speaking in public. What we really want to do is get people really interested also in our kiosk that's in the train station. Um, and that's like a little mini library branch. You can go in like a like a vending machine and then check out books there. So we really hope you can spread the word. There's a kiosk at the train station that you can get books. Are you talking about poison? Yes. Uh, you know, like Matthew Oliver's very simple last but I don't know. Do you guys have animated books? Yeah. So you mean like uh, books on tape or you, you, you know like like I went to the uh video like you know like three days ago and you know it's that wait and wait like right that and I see a lady sitting next to me, you know, she was reading a book, you know, like ebooks with, with a whole story, you know, that the pretty motivation to read because you go in the in, in the story like because it has pictures and, and it's animated. Yes. And then when you know it threw me all the way to my childhood because like every Sunday, you know, I, I used to send a parade from a chicken the baba beat me and, and rent a book in a little store for 10 cents. And I uh, when I got up from church, you know, I go rent my book and, and then you know like come in every, you know, I go say. About eyes, so you know, but I mean, maybe. yes, and, and, and I know those, but I don't know where we have a lot of those. They are yes. called now graphic novels. How do you call those? Graphic novels. Graphic novels. Graphic novels. Yeah. Graphic novels. Graphic novels. Make it sound more fancy, but really, you know them as comic books. Oh, I know them. There you go. They're very fancy now. So it's called graphic novels. We have graphic novels. We have a lot of graphic novels because they really help kids with reading, especially if you have sons and boys who have difficulty reading. Getting them to start reading with graphic novels really helps them with their reading. Are you guys having the reading program this summer? Yes. We will we'll be having an online and an analog reading program this summer. And we're going to be launching it the book where you can also participate in the reading program from the book. Yeah, so we're very excited. Like I said, look for Eric in his neighborhood association tour. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. And remember today, graphic novel. <laughs> I Okay, we're going to go to visual online. Lisa Solomon. Lisa, can you update what's happening with the school? Yes, hold on one second. Let me get the presentation up for everybody. And hello, everyone. How are you? This is Lisa Solomon, principal at Madison Elementary School here in Santa Ana. And we have lots of great things that have been going on. And let me just get the presentation to pop up. Sorry, I'm having some technical issues. Here it goes. Um, and let me get to the first slide. And hopefully you can see it. Let me get it in slideshow mode. Thank you. Can everybody see the presentation? Yes. 
Okay. And hi, everyone. Nice to see you all again, even if it's in a virtual way. I wish I could see you all. Um, as you know, in Santa Ana, we've been working um, to develop this graduate profile um, that describes all the knowledge, skills, and abilities that we want our students to have. I wanted to start with this because I did talk a little bit about it last time. We're continuing our work and getting the message out, what we're expecting for our students, and we're really defining what we expect students to be able to do when they graduate. Um, if you haven't had a chance to look at it, please go to our website. You're going to see some traits that we talked about in Comlink before about teaching our students about the impact that they have in the world, um, you know, about um, being lifelong learners, and um, just knowing that there's um, different skills and abilities that we want them to know as they're graduating, not just the academic, but also civic engagement. Um, we want them to be able to solve problems in the real world, really be, be out there in their community and doing what they can to help and support um, our communities um, that we have, including doing like service project, action-based learning projects. So as we're defining this even more, we are gonna be asking for the community's help and support. I have it also in um, Spanish, just so you can see it. It's a perfil del graduado. Um, so if you haven't had a chance, please go on our district website, please look at it. And also as you hear about committees that are gonna be coming up, we want people to get involved. Um, this weekend, State Senator Tom Umberg recognized um, some Santa Ana Unified School District um, women for the work that they have done. And these are the people that were recognized. Many of you may recognize Dr. Susie Lopez Guerra, Vivian Hansen, who's the assistant principal here at Madison Elementary. Um, they recognized um, face community workers, family and community engagement workers, as well as um, principals like Dr. Carrie Braun and Dr. Sonia Yamas from our school district and Juliana Martinez, who's a special education teacher. We wanted to make sure everyone knows about these wonderful women and the work that they're doing in Santa Ana Unified and in our community. Um, also, Dr. Sarah Shori um, Marin, the principal at Adams, was named as the AXA Region 17, that's Orange County Elementary Administrator of the Year, so she got recognized. And here you see her in her Starbucks Cafe. They were celebrating literacy, and um, they have their own little, own little book cafe, which I'm sure the people from the public library would love. Um, we also wanted to celebrate Mendez teacher Ernesto Cisnero publishes his second book. It's a book called Falling Short. Um, he, this, his first book was written about the community here. It, it even describes the streets here in Santa Ana, Highland Street. Um, there's a character in his book named Miss Solomon. This is his second book. It's not a sequel. It's just, it's a different book. Um, different story, but we just wanted to make sure that you know about it, and hopefully you'll be able to find it at the public library as well. Um, also, we've been hosting some special education community meetings. Um, our superintendent is making sure that we're providing quality programs and services for all of our students, including our special education students. So we wanted to make sure that community members know about the next meeting, which is April 20th at 5 p.m. at Mendez Fundamental School. Um, as you know, we had we had a mask update as of March 14th. Masks are highly recommended, um, and we just wanted to make sure that the community knows that um, it's we are not um, we are it's highly recommended. We still have students who are wearing masks in classroom. We respect everyone's choice to be able to wear masks, staff and students, and we want to make sure that the community knows that as well. Um, and the we of course we're following the guidelines from the California Department from the from CDC and the state of California. Um, as you know, our students participated in Boca de Oro. We had everything from orchestra performances to hip hop performances to students presenting artwork or um, participating in um, LitCon, which where they had different ways of expressing through poetry, through prose, through um, essays that they had written. So we celebrated our students and all the different ways that we possibly could. Everything from Polynesian to mariachi bands were seen throughout downtown Santa Ana. And um, students got to also learn more about art and participate in art activities. Um, as you guys know, we're gonna continue the COVID testing. It's available um, for the community um, at Valley High School, as you know, and at the district office, but we just wanted to make sure that people do know about it and it's still available. And then we've also been working to provide vaccine clinics at various school sites. Important dates that are coming up for Santa Ana Unified. 
Um, we have open house, which is going to be March 31st next week for the high schools, April 21st for most elementaries. A few schools have adjusted, had to adjust the dates, April 28th for intermediate schools. And then spring break is coming up in two weeks, April 4th through the 8th. Remember to follow us if you want it. If you need any information or news on Santa and Unified, make sure that you're following us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. And tonight, um, I also have, I'm going to be presenting Teresa Mercado Cota, who's going to be talking about what's happening at Santa Ana College. Teresa? Thank you so much. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for um, the opportunity. And thank you, Ms. Solomon, for um, the opportunity to share a little bit about Santa Ana College. Um, we just wanted to let you know that um, there's several activities happening. For example, um, we do have an LGBTQIA uh, summit uh, that will be happening on April 1st. We welcome everyone to attend, to learn more, to be an ally, to be an advocate. And so it's free. So you can attend in person or virtually. So we welcome you. The other is that we do have a COVID-19 vaccination clinic um, with um, Latino Health Access. And so again, that will also be happening on April 1st. So you can go get your uh, vaccine and then come over to the summit or come over to the summit, then go get your vaccine. So thank you again. Um, thank you again, Ms. Solomon, for helping us uh, share this information and everything is free of charge for everyone. The other is that we have cash for credit um, and the cash for credit is basically, you know, students that are enrolled in classes that start on April 11th. If they take more than uh, six credits, they are eligible for cash. So if you yourself would like to um, register or if you know students that would like to register that are in high school or that are thinking of starting their college career or want to go back to college, we welcome our students to come. And again, our classes start April 11th and we do have a cash that we can award them so that they can continue their education. And then finally, um, we do wanna let you know that uh, we have uh, women, uh, we are celebrating Women's Month this month. And, you know, if you would like to come um, to any virtual event, we do have one tomorrow. We have a speaker that's going to be speaking from 3 30 to 5. And we're glad to provide that information to you if you would like to join us. So thank you, Ms. Solomon, for the opportunity. And thank you, Comlink Ford, and all of you for joining us. And we're here and we're available in case you have any questions. And the event for tomorrow um, in honor of um, Women's History Month is providing healing, promoting hope. As you see, it's up on the screen. So yes. we want to encourage people to attend. As you know, this is definitely a time when we need, do need some healing and we do need some hope. So thank you to Santa Ana College for partnering with Santa Ana Unified and working with us to provide and educate our children beyond um, K through 12. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions? Julie, she does such a great job. No, <laughs> no questions, but we do appreciate the updates of both schools. And uh, as you know, at uh, Santa Ana College, I've always been impressed with the planetarium. And as we get to spring break and you have young children, go to planetarium. That is the best $2, $2 for every charge. <laughs> I learned a lot, even in my age, but it was great. So thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And we hope next time to be there with you. Thank you, everyone. Los estrellamos mucho. <laughs> Uh, I do look forward to it and have you here to find me again. Um, across my email last month came a very exciting program, and I really think it's great. We're very fortunate that we have some of the Orange County Fire Authority is going to talk about it tonight. I want to steal a thunder, and George's going to interview, uh, introduce her. George, you ready? Absolutely. Good evening, everyone. Well, we're going to share a microphone. I am very happy and privileged to introduce Carmen Cardenas for the OCFA. She is the Education Specialist for Santa Cat, which we're very happy to have. And she's been doing this with OCFA for about two years, for about 15 years in service and training specialties. And she is going to talk with us about the girls' empowerment camp here in just a minute. But I would like to point out that she has a couple of flyers on the back table and she has these wonderful little pictures that you scan with your phone that I just love that will give you additional information. How's that? 
Thank you, George, for that introduction. Hi, everyone. Like George has mentioned, my name is Carmen, and I'm with the Orange County Fire Authority. One of my exciting parts, actually, of my job is I get to work a lot of community relations with community involved projects. I remember actually, I just saw Mayor Pro Tem Becerra at the Commute Across America at Santiago uh, Elementary, and that was lots of fun. So it was great to just be there and, of course, see everyone that participated. Lots of fun to get to do that. The Girls Empowerment Camp is a free camp. It's open to any teen that's 14 to 18 years old. And we really focus on encouraging teamwork and self confidence for, throughout this program. It is the Girls Empowerment Camp to encourage females that are typically, they have not been a large predominant part within the fire service. However, we do welcome males to join us as well. This program is all about learning about the fire service. You'll get to hear from firefighters, but also others within the fire service, such as the education team, such as myself, and also the fire prevention, human resources, and others at the Orange County Fire Authority. We actually will show in a quick, quick video uh, on the next slide, but you'll see. located in Irvine. And so with that, the application starts April 1st, which is next Friday, and we encourage due to the high level of interest that you apply that day. So don't wait. If you're interested, please apply April 1st. And we also have a website if we want to move on to the next. Uh, are we on the left? Yeah. <laughs> So the website to, for more information is joinocfa.org forward slash GEC, and which stands for Girls Empowerment Camp. And again, this is free, and we encourage you, if you have any questions, please call me. Uh, my name again is Carmen. My phone number is 949-697-4283. And para todos los padres que están aquí viéndonos en español o están aquí en persona, Por favor, tenemos la información aquí um, en la mesa, pero pueden escanear el código que tenemos. Tienen la información en español. Um, information is available in Spanish, English, Vietnamese, and other languages. So you're welcome to scan the code for more information. Uh, if there's any questions, I will sing around if you have any questions for me. But please do also take some fire information, fire safety. Um, this month, we are raising awareness on any um, how to prevent kitchen fires, and which is the number one cause of fires everywhere. So please take that information. But thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I have sent up the OCFA in the training. Yes. Where they were taking actions to Yes. Is the girls or anyone that did Apply to say the military. What kinds of things are they going to do? They're going to put uniforms on, they're going to use axes, they're going to walk around buildings, they're going to learn how to use fire extinguishers. Yes, fire extinguishers, right? They're going to use the hoses, learn how to go up the ladders, move the ladders around, everything that you think of when you think of the fire service. And if you visit actually the website, you'll see a longer video that's like even more details as to what you get to do. But yeah, we hope to see you there. Hopefully, you can make it out. Please stop by and say hi. Yes. Yeah. Again, I'm Carmen. Thank you. How many years are you? 14 to 18. Four? 14 to oh. 18. So you qualify, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. I think it's a very exciting program. And it shows young uh, ladies of what they can do. Very, very, very exciting. Hope you have a great turnout. I was telling some folks that I, besides, Volunteering the city. I run a time clock and I was very fortunate to do a rugby match two weeks ago. And we had the uh, LA uh, Gortinis by Amy Utah. In between, we had a bunch of uh, seven and seven women playing rugby. And one group of from Australia and the US, and right at the end of the fourth exhibition game, two ladies came together, hit their heads, and we heard it on the sixth floor of the Coliseum. That's how loud it was. 
It amazed me that Mary Bikini is helping get off the field. The Aussie girl grabbed the house and wrapped it around her head and she was ready to go. <laughs> she wasn't talking about that stop. Obviously, the blood stops were so, but uh, I give her credit. She was ready. Uh, there you go. Okay, we're going to end this special part with one last uh, talk, and that's it. Uh, Peter Katz, who was our president, and passed away in August, uh, really wanted to get certain go. And then he came to us today, he became discharged. So we're needed for him. And so uh, we are in the effort of trying to get certain going in the city again. And I'm going to have Evangeline talk a few words about it. Um, I've been in touch with uh, Steve Reiner, if you remember, with the last month. I think we had this a couple months ago. We had them here about the CERT program with the Community Emergency Response Team. And uh, Steve Reiner is the one who is going to sort of get the work done for it. And when, the last two days, I've been communicating with uh, Steve Reiner and uh, Commander Marty. Um, and um, what they have done is that uh, Commander Marty is letting uh, Steve Reiner take over with the Orange County Fire Department after uh, Captain Horner, if you remember him, he used to come out from the fire department quite a bit. He's retiring or already retired, so I just heard. Uh, and they're going to find out who is taking his place. And then Steve Bryan will be working with him to find out how many, what, what kind of a program he can come, they can come up with for all of those people who are interested. So what we would like to do here at Conway is to try to get a list, even from the people that are coming to our meetings, of how many would like to go through the CERT program. It's an absolutely wonderful program. I was in the very first one, and we had a real hands-on uh, class all the time, every, I don't know, every weekend or every something we took down all the time. It was several months for the program, but it was the hoses we just did everything. And uh, so that, that's where it stands right now. We just want you to know it's we're not going to let it die, okay? If we're just keeping in contact. It's a thing to do for us to keep in contact by email or by telephone call constantly. So how do we wear it down with those that we do? <laughs> so that's where it stands right now for you folks. So if you are interested, any of you, come up here, why don't you, after the meeting, and I'll, have, I'll start a paper up here with people's names and numbers, uh, if you're interested in joining the CERT program. And if they see how many people are actually interested, then uh, I think that will encourage them to move on with it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Evangeline. And the board in support of the CERT has made the commitment that we're going to find a person in each neighborhood to identify as the contact person. So if and when that happens, and yeah, sorry, in Southern California, just when it's going to happen. We have the major quake, what have you. We'll be the communication group back to the city to know what's going on. Fire department. And that's what the whole idea of CERT is. So the city is rounds like Anna, I'm supposed to make the Honey Beach had exit service. So we have people to, to learn about, to learn from. Okay, now I'm going to move into our main presentation. And let's talk about community budgeting uh, discussion for this fiscal year. And I'd rather say this, I, I, you know, I think we're very blessed in this city to have people like Captain Town. We look at the city, uh, uh, look ahead, plan for what outages we can have or what we have. And we've done an excellent job talking and putting together for the next fiscal year. And we all remember back when we were facing vacancy and all uh, bankruptcy and all the problems we have. We're a sound city financially through the work of Catherine and her, her team. So, Catherine, come talk to us. First, I'd like to uh, thank the Conley Board for having us here again tonight. We always appreciate being able to interact with the public in any way that we can and get your opinions. Um, so uh, I'm joined tonight by Daisy Perez. She is the assistant to the city manager and Waldo Barella, he is our budget manager. We're here to talk about the city's budget. And uh, due to careful financial management and conservative budget practices and leadership from our city council, uh, the city's finances are in good shape. We completed a pension debt refinancing to save uh, the city more than $138 million. Statewide, sales tax is growing, and Santa Ana is no exception to that rule. 
Uh, the city's budget is balanced and the general fund has a strong reserve of cash for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Uh, the city council has increased the budget for sidewalk maintenance, traffic calming, alley improvements, uh, graffiti removal, and tree, uh, tree trimming. One time money has been added to give the train station a facelift and uh, assist downtown businesses, repurpose the Cypress fire station, and add some street lights. So Daisy will share how we're using the city's allocation from the federal American Recovery uh, American Recovery Plan Act, and Waldo is going to share how the city is using Measure X sales tax dollars and the cannabis tax that's been set aside for both use and enforcement. Finally, you'll get a quick preview of a new tool that allows you to share your opinion by building your own version of the city budget online. Uh, the tool is easy to use. It's, it's fun. I've used it. It's going live this week, and it will be available in English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So after the presentation, we're going to answer as many questions as you throw at us. And before I pass this presentation on to Daisy, I'd like to thank you for being here and being engaged and being interested in your local community. And I look forward to hearing your opinions. Daisy? All right. Good evening, everyone. My name is Daisy Crows, Assistant for the City Manager. It's nice to see many of you in person finally for so long. Um, tonight, I'll be giving everyone a quick overview of our Revive Santa Ana program. It's a comprehensive uh, pandemic recovery initiative that's funded by the American Rescue Plan Act and is spearheaded under the leadership of our mayor and city council. So in total, the city has allocated $128 million from the federal government. We have received half of the money so far, and I'll be going over our spending plan for that first half. So we have five broad focus areas for our revived initiatives, and these are the recovery from the pandemic, direct assistance programs, public health and safety, critical infrastructure, and city physical health. And we uh, the City Council finalized this plan in July of 2021, and we have until 2026 to spend that money. And I'll be going over each of these spending categories in a little detail and showing uh, where different projects are. And you'll see that we're rolling them out um, based on need, as well as the scope of the project. Um, some of these projects are multi-million dollar investments into the city, and so it takes careful planning um, to make sure we do everything. So the first is the recovery from the pandemic. We've allocated $7.5 million. And part of that goes to cover things like OCSA calls for service for COVID recovery. We have various programs for sanitization and prevention, which we'll talk in greater detail. Um, and we're also looking at the possibility of having our own public health department. As many of you know, um, public health is something that is currently under the purview of the County of Orange. And so there's a study going on whether the city of Santa Ana would be better served with our own public health department. It's quite complicated. Um, and so there's a pretty complex study currently in the works to do that. There's also a lot of exciting things coming with communications, mental health recovery. And uh, we recently completed a large project to do deep cleaning uh, throughout the city of our 588 bus shelters. So I did want to highlight the sanitization and prevention program um, because this is a fairly large investment. So we have heard loud and clear that for many of our residents that they would like to focus on seeing a cleaner Santa Ana. And this program is really aimed to do that. Um, and so what it is, it's a proactive effort focused in our uh, qualifying census tracks. And we have four crews out with three individuals each roaming the city every single day. And all they're doing is cleaning the city. And so you'll see, there's a map. Yes. 
So these blue areas here are what we're calling our qualifying census tracts, is what the federal government has given us the green light to spend this money in. And since June, uh, January 2022, when this program launched, there's been over 4,000 locations in the city that have been serviced by this program. And each crew is able to cover about four miles a day. So each of those yellow dots will see there is a difference. So next is our direct assistance program. Um, this is an allocation of over $29 million that directly goes back into the hands of residents. The bulk of that program, or the bulk of that is through our rent, uh, rental assistance, but we also had a large allocation of $6 million for direct assistance that many of you saw the city roll out uh, back in December of 2021. And so we were able to visit over 17,500 of your homes uh, door to door. That was a very exciting effort that was led um, by our mayor and city council last year. We have a couple other programs we're rolling out with direct assistance. We have a food distribution program or programs actually that uh, are launching very soon hopefully within the next couple of weeks. And then in the next couple of weeks, we'll also have uh, various youth-related programs. There's over $2 million in additional funding for youth-related programs specifically from Revive Santa Ana that we'll be going uh, to council for approval soon. And I did want to highlight uh, the rental assistance program specifically. Um, we have received over which is about $26 million, but we've also received funding from the state to administer as well. And um, we're, there's a shift in this program based on me. So applications are going to close at the end of this month. And so with the extra money that is available, they're going to go back and look at all the applicants that have received funding so far to see um, which of those households are still struggling and in need of assistance to provide them with an additional three months of assistance. Next is our public health and safety. And there's been over $20 million that has been allocated towards various programs. One of the programs that has been activated so far is our rapid response homeless services team, our SMART team. And I'll go into that in a little greater detail in just a second. Um, but I did want to point out there is a large allocation of funding uh, that's been made available for additional park or open space that we're looking at throughout the city. Uh, new park restroom facilities, uh, upgrades to community centers, a lot of really exciting things at our parks. And um, recently, some of this funding was allocated back in October 2021 for the Revive Santa Ana 5K and the Santa Ana Winter Village, which many of you participated in. So to go into greater detail on that rapid response homeless services, a team. So the SMART program is the Santa Ana Multidisciplinary Response Team, which is a pilot program between the city and this nonprofit provider that we have uh, called Sinina. And the program is our newest effort to provide trauma-informed care services to address homelessness throughout the city. Um, we've had a very good relationship with CityNet in the past, and so this will expand those efforts. And really the goal is to divert 911 calls for service for other priority needs and have the city net team focused specifically on homeless related issues. So as you'll see, okay. Um, so since this program has launched, um, the SMART team has responded to 859 dispatch calls, 171 of those calls have been diverted from first responders. 146 were self-initiated proactive contacts. 31 were uh, responses to the My Santa Ana app, and 511 were calls received from the community. So if any of you want to call the SMART team or have a need to do that, that phone number is 714-242-3706. And um, I'm also happy to report that through this SMART initiative, 102 individuals have exited the streets of Santa Ana and been placed into housing. Next, I'll highlight our critical infrastructure. So there's over $21 million uh, being invested into various critical infrastructure projects throughout the city. 
Um, some of that is going towards our parking structures in our downtown. Um, there's also a large investment in broadband access, both expanding the number of hotspots as well as various broadband or internet access points throughout the city. There's also going to be investments, a very large investment in our central library to really transform that, as well as additional library resources throughout the city. And we're also looking at various um, lighting projects, both in parks and in neighborhoods. And then last, there's a small allocation for our city fiscal health of $1.1 million. And so as you can imagine, with all of this additional funding, there's a lot of contracts and paperwork and things like that that um, need to take place. And so we have additional funding allocated just to make sure uh, we're probably following all of the rules and guidelines with this. We have a dedicated staff members also specifically focusing on making sure that all these programs are up and running. Okay. With that, I'll turn it over to Waldo Varela, our budget manager, and then I'll be around a little bit later to answer all the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy, for that update. I'm here to talk about the budget because that's my favorite thing to talk about. <laughs> Everybody wants to talk about the budget. So I'm always uh, interested in what people have to say and we're looking for uh, your input at the end of this meeting. So what you would like to see, I have members of my staff here are taking notes and, and wanting to talk about that. But before I get to that, I just want to talk a little bit about the measure X spending. That's a question that often comes around during budget meetings or even when we're not meeting. Uh, people ask about Measure X and how are we spending the money. So the money is allocated. Uh, there's recurring money, which means it's ongoing. And there's also one-time money. And as you can see from the graph, we have 79% of that is recurring. So every year we'll be having that same amount of about 62 million. And the rest of it is one-time, which is one-time projects. So once they're completed, they're done. And that's the remainder 21%. And for those of you who don't know, Measure X is the city's the sales tax add-on of one and a half percent that we add on to our regular uh, tax that we receive, which is one percent. Uh, the next graph is a chart of kind of the breakdown of what are we spending the money on by some general category. So you can see we're spending uh, about nine point nine million dollars uh, related to homelessness. Another 4.2 million related to uh, fixing streets and sidewalks. Our uh, main, maintaining our 911 operations, about 10.5 million. Uh, maintaining parks is always an important thing. That's 5.2 million. And then retaining our firefighters, our OCFA uh, contract, as well as our police officers, uh, make up some of that as well. Uh, we do have money in here for youth services of about 2. Point nearly 2.5 million. Uh, a lot of that goes to the librarians that we've added staff, uh, zoo, uh, zoo as well, and also for our crossing guards that help uh, during this uh, busy school time and other library services. The next chart is our general fund revenue. General fund is the discretionary revenue um, amount that we can spend. So general fund revenue is how much money does the city receive to fund its uh, discretionary spending. So we've had a lot of great things happen in the city and our sales tax continues to grow and other areas such as business tax and hotel visitors tax have increased and we've made some adjustments. And so this graph is an updated uh, revenue chart uh, given that we've recently approved our mid-year update. And so our property tax is uh, around $80 million. And then you can see our sales tax, our measure X, the one and a half percent is nearly about the same as well as our uh, general sales tax, what we call the Bradley Burns, or 1% of 57 million. Uh, property tax continues to grow, and it's been very healthy in the last few years, and in the upcoming year, it's probably going to grow to at least 4%, and sales tax continues to remain strong, and we look at probably making another update during our next meeting. Uh, the next slide is our adopted budget for the general fund expenditures, and this is where the city gets to decide how to spend their money uh, without any restrictions like some of the other funds. So we focus on that. Uh, the adopted budget was 353 million. As you can see, 55% uh, of it is dedicated towards uh, police and fire services. 
and you have parks and recreation with over $23 million, uh, followed by public works and planning and building. Uh, you also notice in the top portion the um, unfunded liability uh, that's related to the general fund. And uh, Catherine Downs had just uh, mentioned that we've refinanced that uh, debt and we've been able to uh, have savings and we're going to have about uh, $9.3 million in savings next year. So that's something that's going to be able to reduce and allow us uh, other opportunities to uh, spend uh, money in other ways. Um, some of you asked about the Canvas Public Benefit Fund. Uh, this is uh, money uh, related from funding received from adult use and commercial uh, cannabis activities that are sent over and transferred into a separate fund to fund uh, parks and libraries, basically youth services, as well as enforcement. And so uh, my focus is mainly to look at the library and the parks. So uh, some of the programs listed here, you have to talk about the bookmobile or the knowledge mobile, and uh, that's uh, obviously uh, in the running here. Uh, we have youth services such as the tutoring program in the library, and they've also rolled out 500 Google Chromebooks. And so that's kind of available to all the uh, young people in our community. We've also expanded the mobile hotspots, 300 mobile hotspots, and they're available to check out at both the uh, main or central library and the New Hope Library. Uh, there's also digital content available as well. Um, some upcoming big projects are the renovation of the New Hope Library. So New Hope is, is the other library that we have and that's going to be renovated as well as uh, recently i know in this slide it says that improvements of the uh, children's play and learn patio at the main library and that's already open i think it was open last week there was a, a opening ceremony i believe last week and so uh, those projects that just uh, they get started and they start ongoing as well um Next one is uh, parks and recreation. We have programs of about 664,000. Uh, some of the money obviously is dedicated towards youth and we use the nonprofit agencies to do uh, different types of activities such as dance and music, uh, the STEM, uh, media arts, and also domestic violence uh, prevention. Uh, also for our zoo uh, to support their programming that they have. And uh, that way we can connect the community. Everybody know we have a zoo, right? Okay, you can visit the zoo. It's a wonderful place to visit and lots of activities going on there. A uh, year round aquatics program at Memorial Park. So now that, that COVID is, is over, they plan to enroll about 300 uh, people during the aquatics program that they offer. Uh, they offer free monthly excursions to over 250 Santa Ana youth. Okay, whale watching, amusement parks, sports events, and theater. And a youth uh, paid internship program, which is uh, great uh, to have. Uh, in our city and it's something the city council has definitely wanted and supported. Uh, some of the big projects that are uh, underway are splash pads. I think they're still designing those right now. We have the design phase. Uh, seven fitness courts have been installed and we are in progress. And a new uh, butterfly exhibit at the zoo as well as the zoo goat escape project. So I guess we don't want to let the goats out. Uh, lastly, there are some projects that are still in process and still haven't uh, gotten started. Uh, the Recreation Department, Parks Department, is uh, trying to create a recreation mobile where they can go out in the community and do recreation programs in various neighborhoods. Uh, the Nature Center, located at our San Diego Park, is looking to be re excuse me, renovated. And uh, also a traveling zoo exhibit uh, is in the works as well. And for Santa Anita Park, uh, there's a project to build a new uh, soccer field. There's just many more projects uh, in the way right now. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about what the Catherine Downs had mentioned earlier is our uh, budget engagement simulation tool. We call it BEST. And this is where you get to interact with uh, the budget, get more familiar with the budget. So we uh, have a little uh, a graphic up here that kind of talks about you know, the revenue, and but also talks about the expenditure. Uh, there's also some limitations on what you can do because we can't obviously raise taxes like uh, without voting uh, on it. So there are some limitations, but it'll prompt you and tell you when those uh, uh, limitations are there. That's easy to use format, uh, allows you to provide your input, uh, focuses more on the spending side of the budget uh, for new projects, uh, not currently included in the budget, you can enter your own ideas uh, by selecting the red comment bubble. 
And there's a lot of interactive on it. We will have the link on the following pages. Uh, part of that uh, budget engagement uh, tool is also the prioritize feature. And this is where we say, here is you know so much money we'll give you, $11 million. And here's some general categories that at least we've heard and you get to select uh, how much goes to each category. Some categories may get more and some categories may get less. But this allows you the opportunity to interact and to think about some of the decisions that you, know, you have to make as well as our city council, city manager, uh, make on, on uh, so much money uh, available to you. So it's a neat uh, engagement tool and you can submit it to us and we can use that information and share it with the city council as well. Uh, one of the main and important things on the last uh, slide is how to provide your opinion, how, how to provide your input. That's always a question we get asked. How can I tell you what we're looking for in the budget? So you can always call us. There's our general uh, finance number and then they'll connect you to someone in the budget office. You can also email us. We've also created an online survey and you can click on that link. Uh, copies of the presentation are located at the back of this uh, room and you can take that online survey. Uh, then we have, of course, the budget engagement uh, simulation tool or best. Uh, so we have a link to the simulation tool part of it and link to the prioritized section as well. Uh, all this should be available soon. In both there. It's available in English, but uh, as well as Spanish and Vietnamese. So we're waiting for kind of one more, one or two more things and it should be live very, very soon. But you can go ahead and click on the link and then look at it now. But uh, just a reminder, your input is important to us. And any way you want to contact us, let us know. Uh, lastly, we have a lot of um, community budget meetings coming up, so we'll be very busy. Uh, last year we weren't as busy, but this year we'll be very busy. So our next one's at New Hope Library on April 11th. Uh, April 18th is the Pentecostal Church of God located off memory lane. April 20th is at the Dell High Center. Uh, April 26th, we'll have a virtual meeting because some people still don't feel comfortable in in-person meetings, so we'll have a virtual meeting on April 26th. April 27th, we'll have a, a meeting at the Chamber of Commerce and May 2nd at El Salvador Park. Um, but in addition to those community budget meetings, you can always attend city council meetings, provide your input during public comments. And so uh, there's a couple of those dates on there, May 12th and May 17th. And then June 7th is when we kind of get the more formalized uh, presentation of the budget and June 21st. So you can provide your input uh, to the city council directly at any of our workshops in so with that, uh, are there any questions or comments that we can try and answer? Yes. How are you letting people know about the meetings that you just said in the different locations? Sure. Uh, Paul Eakins, our uh, public information officer, will be sending out a link uh, pretty soon that's going to go out not just to a normal distribution list, but 40 some thousand people we can text uh, with information. Yes. One. Um, great to be here with all of you in person. Um, so, um, so we through a lot of our regular channels where you get our news about the city. Um, we're sharing this information on our social media, through Mixel, it's on our website. Um, but, um, but also one thing we, we did is we're using a new text service. So we actually sent out a text message um, that went to. Uh, it's supposed to target Santa Ana phone numbers. Um, you may have received this uh, with someone this morning. Um, it's not a perfect system. Sometimes there are numbers in there that aren't necessarily Santa Ana. Some people might get missed, but it goes to about 48,000 phone numbers that are associated with Santa Ana residents. Um, and so we sent that out to alert people uh, about the budget meetings that are happening. Um, so uh, that's we're really trying to push, push the information out, and get the word out to everyone so that uh, we can really get more uh, community engagement in the budget process. Um, we'll keep doing this through all of our uh, all of our channels, all of our communications platforms. So, um, uh, so you know, if you're on social media, you can re repost and share uh, our posts about this, and uh, keep sharing it with uh, your neighbors and family and friends, and help us spread the word. And one of the best communication tools is yourself. So the more you let people know, the, the better it is. So that's why we like coming to these meetings because. You guys are you know, president or leadership at your various neighborhoods, and you can spread the word out that way. So we, we're using a, every way possible we, we can this year, uh, given that we don't have as much restrictions as last year. Yes. You have some things of which will be uh, that are free, right? 
we have some things that are free for Santa Ana, right? I mean, like the the uh, zoo, the library, the the cube. The, those things that are free. I was wondering if uh, we still publish that. So. According to Paul, I see him nodding his head. I'm going to say yes, but I'll refer that to Paul. Paul, please. So please. I know we have a few days at the zoo. You want to get it out of there, right, Paul? Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's not. That's what you're asking. And of course, one thing I forgot to mention is the uh, the city manager's newsletter. Um, if you haven't signed up for that, um, it's a great resource. It comes out about twice a month, and um, uh, it has the link to the new upcoming city council meeting agenda and. Uh, a lot of city news and, and events and other information. And so we include in there things like uh, when the zoo has the resident free Sunday once a month, right. we have the uh, Bowers. Bowers Museum. Museum. Bowers Museum. So yeah, Bowers, Bowers Museum has a day for residents. Um, the, obviously the library has a lot of free programs. Mm -hmm. The parks have a lot of free programs. Um, so uh, yeah, so there's a lot of great resources in there as well. And again, we put these things uh, on our website and again uh, through our social media and all of our other platforms. So um, you know, keep an eye out for that stuff. There are a lot of great free resources out there for us. Uh, I have a couple of questions. First, we'll take Carl. You guys can go ahead. Mayor Carl, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, Cannabis and then gradually 
We don't really think that it's going to have that much of an effect on our revenue streams, and here's why. Our regulation for cannabis business is more friendly than what some of the other cities are adopting. And because we were one of the first cities, or the first city in Orange County, um, the, the businesses are already here, the regulations are more friendly, and, and so we, we don't think we're going to see a whole lot of leakage. And I have um, read some studies statewide that indicate that there's actually uh, quite a bit of market available for more. So it, it, we'll watch it very carefully, but as of right now, we don't think that it's gonna have a big impact on us. My uh, last question is kind of really big for Daisy too. I see a lot of money, a lot of spending, but I don't see anything out there for soon. And we, Quite frankly, I use my terminology. It's not very good in the city, but it's really not very good. Um, Comlink is going to push to get CERT going again. How can we get a line item, say $2 million, set aside for CERT so we buy the equipment and get the program going? We start at step number one by letting us know so we can pass on that information. That's step one. Step two, like I said before, is that uh, you have plenty of opportunity to provide your input at city council meetings. You know, other community better be making sure it's being shared and we see uh, that that's the direction we can support. And again, anything that we receive here as far as input and what the community sees the priorities, we'll share with the uh, city managers and the council. So that may make a good decision. If you haven't taken with with you, take one of these home because it doesn't have the website to, to respond to and you may think of something out this meeting or some months to come forward. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, did you mention the Cypress Fire Department project? I'm sorry. The Cypress Street Fire Department that you guys were looking at? Yes. Someone had mentioned that. Um, what's the plan on that? Do we have one? <laughs> There's actually several ideas that have been floated. So what we did was the city council appropriated a million dollars to repurpose that building. And so there's there's been uh, several ideas, including um, you know additional locations for different or additional location for different youth programs. Um, it could be like some kind of after school program, it could be some kind of library program. But there there have been multiple ideas floated. None have been finalized yet, but the money is there in the budget. So once once um, we are able to get consensus and the city council gives us direction to move forward on a specific project, then uh, we will have money to do so. And Daisy, you have more. Yes, we will be hosting specific listening sessions and community engagement sessions on the Cypress Fire Station. We really want to hear from you as we're going through this process of what the community is looking for before we engage in our project. So, so that should be happening in the next couple of months. Are there any, any, any other questions out there? Um, I was curious, um, you mentioned the cannabis distributors. Um, are they also growing in here, or is it mostly just selling? Yeah, we do have some cultivation. We have four other areas in addition to just selling uh, cannabis, we have cultivation, distribution, manufacturing, and testing. But there is cultivation. Any other questions? Well, we very much appreciate you spending time with us at Comlink and putting the uh, giving us this presentation. So thank you very, very, very much. And thank you for having us. So thank you for being interested. <laughs>
you're now a bad predator after the Santa Ana School District. I met with the Santa Ana School District. I talked to people and thank you for uh, our, our mayor pro tem for what he's supplying to us. We're trying to resolve that so we can meet again. Um, if we don't, neighbors don't get together, we're going to lose it. And if we lose it, we're a good part of uh, the city, the activity, and the volunteers. So just let you know that the Calming Board, yours truly, is very active trying to get this issue resolved. And hopefully, next time that we meet, which will be in April, third, fourth, I'm sorry, uh, fourth uh, Thursdays in, in April, that uh, we can have something resolved. Because if we don't follow our, mo our uh, model, we're going to call it light and set Anna block by block. It's going to go down. And so that's why it feels very important. With that, I'm going to. Uh, this is the biggest council, correct? So, uh, with that, uh, I'm going to adjourn the meeting tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank those online. I'm sorry. Uh, I had <laughs> look at Brooklyn. I want you to add. I want to hear about the budget like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I'll say is, uh, Carl and Angelique, thank you for your advocacy for the neighborhood association as far as the meeting spaces. Because, yes, I'm here from town, but I'm a homeowner in the city. I pay my uh, fair share of property taxes that also go towards the bonds for those facilities, and they should be accessible for all of us. And so, I, I'll be the first to continue to advocate with you that those facilities be available for all of our neighborhood associations. But I would strongly recommend that you join Carl and Benjamin and continue that advocacy as well. So that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> With that, thank you for coming. Thank you to the city for the presentation today. Thank you.